Okay, so James had an awesome idea. We've always tried to stick to recent games with these episodes, just to keep the list of possible games from getting overwhelming. Then, one day, in a moment of brilliance, James yelled, SUBCATEGORIES! To which I replied, Awesome! What are we talking about? And he said, Breaking up older games you might not have tried into subcategories. And I said, Yes! Love it! So here we are. Today, we're going pure 16-bit. We'll be talking about Super NES games, Sega Genesis games, and... Yeah, just those first two. We're trying for under-the-radar games here, so for those games that became popular later, like the Ogre series, Earthbound, or Dracula X, we're just gonna assume that you know about them already and leave them off the list. Even breaking things down to just this era of gaming, there's no way we're gonna be able to cover everything, so feel free to throw some suggestions for games we missed in the comments. We may even do another 16-bit edition somewhere down the line. No PC games today, though. That episode's coming later. Alright, without further ado, the games. Starflight. If you liked Star Control 2 or just want to see a little-known game that clearly influenced Mass Effect's design, Starflight is a blast. It may well be one of the best exploration-based games of the 16-bit era. Actually, it's more than that. I'd go out on a limb and say it's probably one of the best exploration-based games ever made. Just make sure you get the manual when you pick it up. The Starflight game manual was less of an instruction book and more of a mini-novel with a lot of clues about where to explore and what's going on in the universe. EVO, or EVO, Search for Eden. A little-known Enix action RPG about evolution. With all the wonders of this poor creature creator in our modern tools, I'm shocked no one's ever run with this concept again. But if you want a really solid action game with a radically different take on what an action RPG setting might be, I'd start by looking here. You start out as a fish, and work your way through the different stages of evolution until... Well, you solve the mystery of why we evolve. For anyone out there who picks this one up, here's a quick tip. If you choose the right, very specific evolution path, you can evolve into a human, end up as a bird, even visit aliens. There's a ton of interesting little easter eggs in this game that radically change how it plays. War Song. If you're a fan of the Shining Force series, here's another tactical adventure that you can't miss. Warsong is apparently part of an epic, sprawling series in Japan, but this installment's the only one that made it to the States. It serves as an intermediary between our modern tactics games and Advance Wars-style play. I can also refer to it as a precursor to the incredible Brigandine, which holds a guaranteed spot on any future PS1 games you might not have tried episode we might do. Shadowrun. Before Deus Ex, this was the cyberpunk RPG of choice. It's got hacking, gunplay, magical cats. Just make sure you get the SNES version, because the Genesis version's a totally different game. Not a bad game, mind you, but the SNES Shadowrun is an unsung cyberpunk classic. Terranigma. For fans of ActRaiser or Soulblazer, this is the last of what many consider the true quintet games. It's an action RPG with a strange, heavy, more thoughtful take on what an action RPG story could be. It was never released in the US, but there is an English language PAL version out there. Be warned, there is some padding in this game. The middle drags on too long, and some of the puzzles seem completely counterintuitive if you're used to modern design, but trust me, the payoff is worth it. Uncharted Waters, New Horizons. I confess, I love exploration-driven games, and this is a game set in the age of exploration. There's never been anything to me quite like the fantasy of just getting on a ship and sailing past all the ordinary to a world where anything might just still be possible. And while there are no monsters or dragons in this game, that's exactly what it encapsulates to me. It's got six playable characters, each with a totally different and surprisingly well-written storyline. Some are focused on exploration, some on trading, some on combat. 
some on helping to change the political balance of Europe. But all of them balance these disparate aspects for a fantastic adventure on the high seas. If you like Sid Meier's Pirates, to me this is strictly an improvement on the formula. Inindo, Way of the Ninja. Oh my goodness, Inindo. It has something like 20 classes, fantastic RPG gameplay. It's set in the Sengoku Jidai, or Warring States period in Japan. It has crazy strategic sections. What's not to love? If there are any Suikoden fans out there, this game certainly feels like it was reference material for the design of that series. And finally, UN Squadron or Area 88. Depending on where you're coming from, the game may have come out under either of those two titles. It's a side-scrolling shooter based on an interesting old anime. It had three very different playable characters, persistent upgrades you could get between levels. You can even go back and grind on levels you've beaten if you want more cash for upgrades, interesting health mechanics, and a strategic map. What really sets this apart from other side-scrolling shooters is that you get a sense of your place in the larger scheme of things you understand what impact your actions have on the situation as a whole. It's an interesting twist, and worth checking out if you're out of side-scrolling shooters to play. Now that was fun. I hope that helps to keep you entertained the rest of the summer. If you've got any specific era or console you're interested in seeing an episode for next, go post it in the comments. I foresee us doing more of these down the line. See you next time!